two, one, and we are live. What's up, CP family? We're gonna do a live Q&A right now for you guys. If you have any questions, drop them in, and we'll roll with it. No worries, Mia. Just schedule one that you wanna do one-on-one. -on -one. We can do, uh, cool, cool. Why don't you just talk about that for, for a little bit? Talk about the circuits and how they've been going and... Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, this is the first cycle that we're really not, we're rolling out the CP circuits, which combines the three tools that we've been doing. Mind, body, stroke. So if you go to the tools tab, there's a bunch of mind stuff, 20 minute mind stuff, 20 minute stuff on the body, 20 minute stuff on the stroke. And really, this is just like how we, it's a category. It's yeah. a category. Really, it all... It's a way of isolating a part of, of your game. Uh, yeah, and like if, if you want to dial in something specifically, but in a, in a general sense, all it really means, and the mind tools are going to be done sitting down, most of them with your eyes closed. The body tools are going to be done with your body. It's going to be a little bit more active, and the stroke ones, you're going to have a racket in your hand. That's the biggest delineation. We've been rolling out CP circuits where we combined all three, which is a super powerful way to do it. Super, super powerful way. 60 minute sessions to really get you understanding it in the feeling of it and then letting it come out in your stroke, which is what we're all trying to do. Yeah. And so we've been rolling them out. They've been awesome. We try to do a group one, you know, at least once a week for everyone to hop on. We also post the replays as well, but what we want to do as well is one-on-one. -on -one. CP circuits that are specific to your mission, to where you're at right now, and we can dial that in. So if you want a one-on-one -on -one personalized 60-minute CP circuit session, let the coaches know, and we'll do it for you. Yeah. Take advantage of it, guys. This is, yeah. I mean, I've, I've done every one that you've run so far, and man, they make me want to play tennis or pickleball afterwards. I'm just like, um fixing to get out there. I feel so great. Absolutely. Raphael, he was on the CP circuit. Raphael, are you in Florida now? Or like, are you, are you like waking up in the middle of the night <laughs> to, to check this out? But, um, Rafa was on the session as well and, um, had a great experience too. Made some comments on it. Um, yeah, Rafa, if you don't mind, sh shoot a, shoot a comment in this video here and just kind of share with everyone what your experience was on the circuit today. I could tell he was zoned. He was yeah. zoned, same with Evan, so it was pretty awesome. But um and you did it too, man. Yeah. How zoned, you... man. Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. I'm like I'm I'm addicted to them. 100%. As as an athlete, you know, sometimes just meditating can get a little bit old, you know. And, you know, we've done one, two, three, four hour meditations before and like the meditation can get old, you know? And so this mind body stroke adding all these elements where at first you know, it's more of a talk or it's more of bringing the mind back to the present moment, back to the body, which you cannot bypass that step. You have to, your mind's got to be here with your body. And then you can begin to evolve your meditation and start moving your body because at the end of the day, you guys are athletes. You know, you want to be able to be present and be authentic out on the court. And then we bring it all together, the final 20 minutes of the circuit, put it together with the stroke. And, and at least for me personally, when every, every time, everyone you've run so far has been mind blowing. So guys, take advantage of it. Schedule one-on-ones or join a group or get your friends together or whatever you want to do. But let's, let's, let's start whipping those out. Yeah, absolutely, man. <laughs> absolutely, that's where it's at. So let's kick some questions. First question is, if I show up to the present no matter what, I, I won't be focused on the, out all right, so he's, okay, I got the question now. If I show up to the present, <clears throat> if I show up to the present, no matter what, I won't be focused on the outcome and fear will disappear, right? Question mark. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's, you know, um, let's say, let's say you, you have a pattern where I get nervous in third set tiebreakers. The third set tiebreaker is a situation. That's an external situation that you find yourself in. And so in week of confidence, what it means to show up is you're paying attention while experiencing the situation because what you'll find is you, you'll usually enter some kind of thought process, some type of thought process. And if you really think about what is the purpose of that thought process, the purpose will be to control the situation. How can I control my performance or control things so I can get the outcome that I want because historically 
I don't perform well in this situation. So what it would mean to show up in that situation is you're paying attention. You're, what you're rising above, you're not actually rising above your nervousness in third set tiebreaker. You're rising above your pattern of thinking in third set tiebreakers. That's what you're rising above. And the way that you rise above that is, you know, in week one, you kind of cut through it with your attention and you listen to the moment, you pay attention, you stay plugged in. And it's, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a beam of light that you like sustain and you stay plugged in. And when you're paying attention, when you're paying attention, you're not in your thinking mind. It's only in your, th it's only in your thoughts about what's happening that fear exists. Yeah. It's really the only place that fear exists. Now, you might be experiencing fear in your body in the form of nervousness, but that's, because, but that's just a reflection of the past. As you sustain attention, what you're actually telling your body, the mind's communicating to the body. Actually, I know in the past, this has been an unsafe situation and you felt the need to panic and then enter a thought process to control it. But through paying attention, you're communicating to the body that, hey, it's all good, it's fine, I got this. This is really okay. This is a safe situation, we're okay, we're gonna be just fine. Um, and that's, it's not through a process of reassuring yourself with your thoughts, it's a process of, your body, your body responds to what you pay attention to. It doesn't, it doesn't, it responds to your thinking too, but if you're paying attention to the moment and you're not, um, giving into the pattern of oh, the, that those thinking patterns you're trying to control the situation control the performance um you're you're telling the body this is you're 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 actually facilitating the the body learning to be calm in that situation and that takes time so understand that that that's what can take a little bit of time um, if i have a pattern of getting nervous i begin paying attention that begins communicating to my body and my nervous system that we're safe in this situation and there's no need to, to trigger the nervousness or the fight or flight that's creating that feeling of nervousness. And then as you do that, very quickly the body acclimates to that new, to that new way of being and you no longer will experience that. Yeah, money dude, it's yeah. money. That's actually uh, a big part of, of, of several of several mission athletes missions this this cycle is to get rid of that fear mm -hmm. get rid of that fear man that's how you yep. do it yep that's how you do it yep um all right all right yo so rafael is back in florida great to be back with the live calls love the cp circuit by adding all three mind body stroke it just worked together after it just comes together um after when i play tennis super awesome man super yep. awesome um, cool. Next question is, oh, it's a great question. How can you tell the difference between confidence and pride? <laughs> uh, that's a great question, man. Uh, I was thinking about pride recently. How would you, how would you answer that? So like, to me, um, we got to go back to how, how CP defines confidence so that we can all get on the same page with what you're talking about. And yeah. this, this question was submitted during the launching the confidence tool. So like it's coming from this definition of confidence and that confidence is showing up, showing up, showing up to what's in front of you, paying attention to what's in front of you. This is a very like, like binary thing it's a very mm -hmm. it's, it's like a very um active thing that you're doing it's like a mechanical thing that you're doing it's like a decision that you're doing and it's something that by that definition would be super effective would be super super effective to having you play at the level of your potential like it makes sense if i'm showing up like i'm more here to play and so like that's confidence right um how is that different from pride, there's nothing to do with pride. Pride is like, most people's definition of pride is very, it's, it has to do with your ego, it has to do with how, you're, how you kind of look to other people, it has to do with like the results you're getting and that kind of thing. And so that's where I would kind of separate them as confidence and pride. Yeah, pride always has something to do with an outcome. And that outcome can be a legitimate result or like a result that I'm getting in the match or someone's opinion of me. And so pride is usually gonna be tied up in that and your ability, your ability to produce some kind of outcome, okay? And, you know, no matter how much the best in the world try to produce an outcome, sometimes they can't do it. You can't do it all the time because you have someone on the other side of the net 
who's trying to produce the same exact outcome. Um, and so when your pride, it's, it's, you're going into like an unhealthy kind of egoic pride when, when it has something to do with the outcome or something to do with comparatively you compared to someone else or someone else's perception of you, someone else's opinion of you. And yeah, just getting an agreement about what confidence is about. When you show up, there's no space for fear to enter. Okay. And when fear doesn't enter, you'll understand that your natural state of being is confidence. That's what your natural state of being is because really what confidence is, is is a firm foundation in the, I'm rooted or grounded in the present moment. And really practically what that looks like is my, I'm, I'm aware of my body. I'm aware of my body. If your mind is connected to your body, you're, you're established here in the present moment. And as you do that, you're not, conceptually thinking about the situation or what's going on within you. You're not thinking, you're not in that thinking mode. And that's where fear tends to slip in, in all sorts of confusing ways. So when you understand that the decision to show up and pay attention to your external environment is actually what's going to facilitate the end result of a state of confidence where I actually feel confident, that decision creates that feeling yeah as you make the decision with that definition like i love how you said like it's natural to be confident it's natural to be confident um i'm not so sure it's natural to be prideful Mm -mm. so it's naturally it's it's um natural to have like just be pride when it has nothing to do with anything confidence the way we're defining it it can be this natural thing now i want i do want to say there's nothing wrong with um looking at your result and celebrating that. Absolutely. And, se- and and so like, it's not like, all right, I won a bunch, but like, I'm not gonna pay attention to that. No, yeah. we, we celebrate that. We celebrate that. And um, and so with that kind of definition, there can be a healthy, there can be a healthy pride. There can be yeah. a healthy being proud, being proud of what you did, being proud that you showed up. Yeah. You just gotta, you got to redefine what you're what you're measuring. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Like you can be super proud that you showed up this match. You be super proud that you you stayed you stayed composed when when it got when the heat was on, or at least made the decision to. Yeah. If if there's if there's any element of better than, even if it's I'm better than I was or better than another individual, that's when we're entering pride because then everything becomes comparative. You don't want to find your pride because pride is a health, there's a healthy pride too. You don't want to find your pride in comparison because that's arrogance. So when we find our pride in, I'm proud of the fact that even though I was nervous, I made the conscious choice to pay attention to what's happening rather than give into the fear and, and think about it and try to control the performance, which never works out good. Like you can be, you can, you can be proud of that. And what you'll, what you'll understand is as you really, as you really learn about these weeks and and dive into it, you're going to begin cultivating a healthy pride around those things. I love it. Absolutely. All right. We'll do one more question unless someone else pops one in. What if, what if I struggle? What if I struggle with finding my inner composure in really tough situations. <laughs> that's the point. That's the point. Is like is is that's that's the what's stopping us from being confo- com- composed is that kind of confusion there. Like how do I find it? Where do I go? What do I do? And it's like it's actually really simple. You slow down and you settle into the moment. You settle in. So let's do the nerves in, in third set tiebreakers example. So in week one in confidence, you show up to what's actually happening because, and, and I'll explain why this is, is so important. We all know like, okay, showing up, like if you don't show up, nothing can really happen, but I'm gonna explain why showing up is actually really, really important. When you show up, what that essentially, what the, the decision you're actually making is you're letting go of an old way of seeing the situation. You have to let go of it. You have to let go of the old way of seeing the situation in order to show up, meaning you're beginning to see it with new eyes. And when you understand that seeing the situation with new eyes is the only way that you can become aware of a new possibility that's outside the old way of being that you agree you don't like. You don't like being nervous in third set tiebreakers. 
So showing up means you're seeing the situation fresh. And the word that comes to mind for me is wonder. You're, you're looking at the situation with a sense of wonder where you wonder what's going to happen. You're making room for a new possibility to happen. So when you show up, you're actually, it's the most critical step. It's why it's week one. You're, you're literally creating the space with your attention without seeing it through the lens of what may have, may not have happened in the past. You're making room for a new possibility to emerge. And then as you see it, as you can, as you, as the possibility exists, you can see it, you can know it, you can claim it, you can move in that direction and you can begin embodying that state of being. But you can't do that until you let go of the old way of seeing it. And the decision to show up is just that. You're letting go of the old way of seeing the situation. And that's why we structured the first part of the mission. In the past, I would get nervous in third set tiebreakers because that's truthful. That is what happened in the past. It's a fact, <laughs> but that's not the way. And, and now, and now, and now I'm free to whatever, to experience my process unfolding, to make a decision of my choosing, whatever it is your, your, that second half of your mission is. So now there's a sense of wonder, you're opening up to the possibilities and that's what it means to show up, okay? So we show up literally to this situation that's actually happening and our attention is connected to it and we're creating space for a new possibility to arise. But something weird is, is, is gonna happen. As you do that, you're still gonna feel nervous. And it's going to be confusing. You're going to be like, I can't find my composure. Where? I can't find it. Yeah. I can't find it. That's because you're, you're searching for a feeling. And when we chase feelings, you don't understand that the decision to show up is what creates the feeling of confidence. The decision to settle into the nervousness, to allow your body to be nervous. Your body is, is just habitually used to responding that way or better yet, reacting that way based upon the old way of seeing the situation. Back to weak of confidence, old way of seeing it. I get nervous in this situation. The body goes, yup, we do, and gets nervous. And so as we show up and create space for a new possibility to arise, your body is still very rooted in time and needs, it needs time to actually adjust and acclimate to a new intention, to a new possibility. And so what we do is we don't react to what we're feeling. We don't feel, so like we're gonna feel the nervousness you don't react to that. You don't go, oh, I'm nervous. I must be failing. I guess I didn't show up. I guess I didn't settle in. I guess I didn't do something right. I can't find my composure. No, you have to understand that these inner states of being begin with a decision. And as you, as you fortify that decision, you're forging a new way of being. And with each time you make the decision, your body has time to acclimate to that new way of being. And then eventually it'll become natural. So what that looks like is we show up, we begin, we begin paying attention, we create space for a new possibility in the situation. In the past, I would get nervous in third set tiebreakers, and now I'm free to be relaxed. Okay. And then when we're actually experiencing it, you're gonna be your your body is still gonna be experiencing the sensation of nervousness. And what you wanna do is you're, what you're actually doing is rising above your reaction to your nervousness, okay? I get nervous in third set tiebreakers. If we're gonna rise above that pattern and no longer have that pattern anymore, the thing that you're rising above is not the nerves. You're rising above your reaction to the nerves. So you react poorly to the nerves and you go, that's a bad thing, I don't wanna be nervous, I don't like this thing, get rid of this thing, I don't want it. And, the, and you're giving the attention to the nerves. What's that doing? That's reinforcing that pattern as something that's real and something that I have and something that I struggle with. And it's carrying the past into the present and into the future. So we show up, it's really important, creates space for the new possibility, something new to happen because I've seen it. New fresh eyes, a sense of wonder. And now I'm, I need to give my body space to make the adjustment. And the way that you actually do that is by not reacting to the nervousness. You witness it by feeling, you feel what you're feeling and you don't react to it. You let it be. Because if you understand, I'm opening up to a new possibility. That means this feeling of nervousness, it's just gonna go less and less and less before it's dismantled and, and I don't experience it anymore. And so when you understand that, you're gonna understand that I'm rising above my own reaction to my nervousness. That means I'm just okay being, I'm okay, I'm okay experiencing the sensation. I wouldn't even call it nervousness. Get rid of the interpretation, okay? Um, show up to the situation that you think triggers that's the response, the response of nervousness. And then whatever the physical sensation is, you remain present with it by being within your body. 
And if you guys tuned into the, the circuit today, what was the, almost the whole entire circuit was about putting your attention inside your body. Yeah. Your attention's always going outwards. You put it inwards, you become aware of your physical body. That means you're going to become aware of the sensations yeah. inside your physical even body. When it, and I love how you say, even when it's unpleasant, especially yeah. when it's unpleasant, like just accepting how you feel right now, congratulations, you're like all, like you're pretty much composed just in that moment. It's this, I'm not gonna, like not embracing it, the non, yeah. like the, the shine away, the contracting it. It's like, even if it's, it's not a good feeling, just connecting to it is like, you're right there to being composed. 100%. I want you guys to get rid of your idea of composure because right now there's a feeling attached to it. And I'm, I wanna be very clear that that's not what composure is. People that have composure, what they really possess is actually a capacity to remain present with unpleasant sensations, okay? People with composure actually possess a capacity to stay present with undesirable and unpleasant physical sensations. Because guess what? Like you're gonna overcome this nervous and third set tiebreaker, but let's just say your game keeps advancing. You're, now you're in the US Open and you're in the finals and it's the third set and you yeah. know, like it's a new level of nerves. And so you better, yeah. what you, it's not about chasing the feeling of composure. It's about understanding I'm here to build a capacity. The better you get, the yeah. more pressure there is. And so it's like you're building a capacity. How do you think you build that capacity? By actually practicing being present with an unpleasant sensation and without judging it, which is the whole entire rise is about doing this. The whole entire first half of the cycle, you pay attention without judging. You pay attention to your external environment without judging. That's how you create room for a new possibility. You, you um, stay present with your inner environment without judging it. That's how you give space for your body to acclimate to the new possibility, to let go of the old patterning which is stored inside your body. And then as we go into week three and week four, we'll talk about that as well, but it's always this level of pay attention and don't judge. Because that's how you, if you think about it, the moment is, the present moment is, it is being right now. If I'm going to align to that, which the whole first half of the cycle is about aligning to the present moment. When I'm aligned to the present moment, I'm free. And when I'm free, I can play my game. So I'm gonna align to the present moment and we get free and then I'm free to, to play my game. The way that you're gonna to align to the present moment is by paying attention. Because if you pay attention, you can only pay attention to the moment. Yeah. That's what attention is. Attention can only connect to something that's actually real and is. And then if you don't judge it, that means you're letting the present moment be as it is, which is how you respect and align to the present moment. So it's always a process of paying attention without judging to our external environment, to our internal environment, to our actions, and to our process. Boom. Yeah. I love it, man. Great that's stuff. huge. That's super huge, man. Um, a lot of good stuff in there. One thing that really popped out to me was let's stop chasing this idea of composure. Like it's not, it's not like, it's not like, cause, cause I think this is a huge misconception. I think a lot of athletes think that they're just going to get better at tennis and now they're more composed cause they have more experience or now they're so good that like, this isn't that hard anymore. And that's just not what happens as that happens. You just play better people. Yep. You, that you, also have that capacity. You play, now you're in the US Open for the first time and, that, and that's nerves you've never experienced before. So it's, it's about handling that feeling, whether it happens now at, a, at an ITF or an L1, like a, a really big tournament that you've ever played or, or whatever, or a finals of anything, or, you know, what it's because you're evolving your game. You're always playing at your pinnacle. So just sit with that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mia said, this last section enlightened me, completely changed my perspective on what I need to think about. It also probably explains why I haven't had much results in improving on this topic. I know Mia, you've been honing in on composure for a long, for, for, for a few cycles now, for yeah. a few cycles. Yeah. 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 Let's, and so let's, let's just be really clear with what, what we're actually doing in this week. You, let's say you're, you're experiencing, because you, you want to get beyond the interpretation. You want to get beyond the interpretation. Oh, I'm nervous. You don't even have to state that. You don't have to like, that's already an interpretation. You just, if you can stay present with how you feel, 
and understand that the only reason you don't want to stay present with how you feel is because you think you play worse. It's the only reason. That's what it means to be attached to the outcome. Yeah, if you played really good when you were anxious, you'd be like... You would love it. You would be, that would be your new idea of composure and that you would be chasing that. So notice we're chasing the feelings that we think in the past I have... You've correlated it with a result. Correlated it with a result, absolutely. And so understand that the way you give your body space because your body is your body's just responding to your mind a lot of times. And so our mind is our mind is labeling things as, uh oh, I'm bad in this situation. And then the body responds and goes, I am bad in this situation. And that's a real thing. When you're tense, like you're gonna play worse. So it's yeah. like it's very real. It's like non negotiable. Yeah. So what we're doing in this week is you're, you're, you feel, you feel the physical sensation that you're experiencing. You feel your inner experience and you stay present with it. Almost as if, um, I mean, if you just think about it, your body is just this, it's doing billions of things, okay? It's doing billions of things and all it requires is your attendance. Your mind needs to attend to your body. And the way that you attend to something is you pay attention to it and you don't judge it and you just stay present with it. That's how you attend to it. And so you attend to your inner space by simply staying present because at the end of the day, your body is the one that hits the tennis ball. Your body's the one that hit the hits the tennis ball. Your mind just needs to stay present with your body and allow it to experience it. What's experiencing understanding that it's not working against you. It's working for you. It's trying to facilitate and, and be able to do everything that you're intending to do. And so, it's completely futile and pointless to resist an inner experience. It's completely pointless. So let's, let's all begin to practice and understand that what composure is, is the capacity, the capacity to remain present with unpleasant circumstances, with unpleasant inner experiences and, and physical sensations. And when I understand that, well, how do you gain that capacity? By doing it, yeah. by yeah. being present with what you're experiencing. <laughs> Like that's how you actually, you're exercising the capacity every time you just feel what you're feeling without mentally labeling it as good, bad, right, wrong, left, right, or whatever. And if that seems daunting or challenging, which it can be, um, check out the CP circuit today because that's all we do. Yes. And we can practice it. Yes. So in the CP circuit, you guys should check it out. And for those of you that did it, you guys can attest to it. At the end of it, I was literally like, I said, I was the first thing I said, I was like, so much of my attention is in my body. I can literally like feel that I have more body awareness and what that is actually doing, what the training is doing inside the portal is you're actually building the, the almost habits, the way like I'm, I'm used to having my attention, in my body, I'm used to feeling my inner experience. I'm used to doing that. I've practiced doing that. And so when the time arises to do it, you've actually built, you've actually exercised that muscle. You've exercised that capacity a little bit. And so everything in the portal, the circuits, the tools, the talks are helping you exercise that capacity. And so you're more equipped to be able to do it when, when you're actually experiencing the challenge in real time. Boom. Mia says, I'll check out the replay for sure. Absolutely. And we'll be doing more. We'll be doing more. Um, so stay tuned. Again, let us know if you want to do a one-on-one. -on -one um we'll do those as well but great start to the cycle guys great start to the cycle let's keep on at it yeah we'll see you on the next one guys peace cool. see you guys